Okay. Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you on Monday, September the 16th. The year's 2024. Let's talk trading. Weekly open and gap with Walmart. These videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine and different from Walmart's. And as always, or at least most of the time, I'm going to remind you about risk management and in let you know you shouldn't lose any more on any one single trade than you are willing to lose. So taking a look at the week, you can see we're off to a big week so far. About 95, 96 pips in range. And all the, well, nope, we do have one open gap here. We've got the uh, dollar Swiss franc gap down and that gap has not filled. You can see we're well above the weekly pivot and the previous week's midpoint so far. If we zoom out to the monthly, we are still in the upper wick zone of the previous month's candle. And we are 30 pips off the high, 207 off the low, and 82 above the monthly open. We're putting in the opening range for the week. As you can see, we exploded through the opening range of the uh, month. We actually opened below the low of that range and we just took off. Not one tick below the weekly open so far. And we just shot up right through that um, opening range for the month. For the year, 30 off the high, 207 off the low. I'm sorry for the month. Um, for the year, we're 57 off the high and 910 off the low. And we're 498 pips above the yearly open. We had an inside bar 10 days ago, which is also the opening range for the month. We just shot right through it. And we've got a handful of... Uh, inside bar trades here on the dashboard. 97 pips of range right now. Looks like we're trying to push to 100. And the yen pairs seem to almost all be over 100 with a couple of exceptions. And once again, we open and we have just gone straight up. So, red rats, get ready for a feast sometime, but maybe not right now, as most of the uh, candles are green here. Bambino flex indicator said to go long. The bias was short at the pivot, and you would have stopped out by now. In fact, we are so far above uh, the pivot, we are only maybe because call it seven pips below r4 on the uh, pivot chart we've taken out the uh, pivots here for the day friday's pivot is still open we haven't closed that one yet for the week we're above and we have taken out that monthly pivot Uh, in and out of the lower wick zone, in and out of the upper wick zone, and we are 53 pips above um, the previous day's upper wick zone, a previous trading day, that is. For the ranges, we're at 97 on the smart range here. That's at the 8 percentile over the uh, last 12 weeks. We are 55 pips above the last week's high and we did not break out of last week's low so right now we've got a higher high and higher low on the weekly chart so walmart you're done trading for the day again walmart did i lose you i'm here i'm here oh i said you're done <laughs> trade or did you get back into another trade i got back into another trade <laughs> unfortunately, well, fortunately, I'm actually up. I'm about to close it. Let me close that guy so I can go and think. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I went and took the uh, two bar entry from 
right when we first got on the video here. And uh, so I was able to pick up two or three bits, so I can't complain. Oh, but, you, uh, oh the bar two? Um, yeah, the bar two trade. You know, so I took that from, let's see, when did I get in? I got in at, uh, let's see, right here at 29. I went into that. I went in there when it went and broke over the top of the high. And I could have gotten five pips on it. And then, uh, of course, it ran back down on me. And I wound up getting three pips of what it looks like. So, you know, it was just, uh, you know, it was sitting out there for me to take, so I took. <laughs> what was your entry on that one? My entry was at. I'll look it up on that. I gotta call up the report. Um, my entry was at thirty-two oh seven point eight. So when you see on candle one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, candle seven, you get that big wick. Um, uh, at the top, yeah, I went in while I was making that big wick, and then of course it went and crashed down on me. And oh. then I was down like like almost a pip. Oh, so that bar two, that was that big outside bar. You took the break of yep. that, okay? It's exactly, exactly right. So you may want to call that an outside bar trade, call it a bar two trade. You know, hey, they're all the same, right? <laughs> yeah, sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're not. It looks like exactly. the uh, bar two trade from uh, from bar three would have been nice right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would have been your entry probably would have been at one point three to eleven point four, roughly, at least for me, the way I trade it. Mm -hmm. And you would be up right now six six and a half pips. Yeah. <laughs> It would have been a nice little trade, that's for sure. Yeah, and uh, there was a trader out there who wanted to ask about your hard stop level. Okay. <clears throat> I know I've said this. I know I'll say this again. You know, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. It's my hard stop, the way I do it, is I know how much money I'm willing to lose for the day. Okay? For the day. So let's say... You know, I'm trading and I'm willing to go and lose $100 for the day. What I do is, the way I look at it is, that's where my stop is, when I'm going to be out 100 bucks for the day. And the good thing about that is, that when I'm up, it goes and gives me a lot more room for it to go and do its craziness and going back and forth. But it can also spoil, you know, some good days, or maybe not good days, but average days. Um, but the advantage of it is that because of the way the pound moves, where it likes to go back and forth, it gives me a little bit of room of movement. So, what does that mean? If I'm willing to lose a hundred bucks, what I do is I don't put hard stops into the market into the market unless I'm walking away from my desk, or if I know there's news about the drop. If there's news about the drop, I'll put the hard stop in. If if I'm walking away, I'll put a hard stop in into the market as a market order. Otherwise, I go and watch it, and I become very, very disciplined of paying attention. And, you know, you've called me out on this a couple times, like, you're in a trade, aren't you? Because I get so super focused on watching price to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere near my hard stop so that I can go and pull a plug when I need to pull a plug. Um, what that does for me, um, it allows me to go and just, again, take advantage of the way that the pound, the pound moves. I'm hoping that makes sense, and if not, ask questions. Well, I think it makes sense, but I guess some traders probably want, um, I don't know, because you say it's 100 bucks, but, you know. Yeah. In your example, that, what percentage what is, of the of your account would that okay. be? Ten percent, five percent, two percent? Okay, I'm willing to go and lose on any particular day. I'm willing to lose four percent for the day, my account. Um, and when I account my account, when I don't do this anymore, but in while I was growing my account, um, 
my account size, I didn't calculate every single day. I, I calculated it for the month. So if my account size was, you know, again, I'll go and just make numbers up here. If my account size was, you know, a thousand dollars, um, I, at the beginning of the month, I would go and say my account size is a thousand dollars. And what does that mean? Four percent, what's four percent of a thousand dollars? Okay, that would be that would be forty dollars. So then my the maximum that I'm willing to lose for the day would be forty dollars. Okay, I think that probably should clear things up for the traders out there. Now I have one other rule that I have in place, and that is that if I lose three days in a row, okay, where I lost four percent, four percent, four percent, which brought me to a um, basically a twelve percent loss on my account. I stopped trading for a, um, for a minimum of five days and reset. Because and look back, what what happened? Why did I lose? Did I lose because I wasn't following rules? Rules? Did I lose because, um, uh, or did I lose because the market just moved that way? And if I'm, if I was taking the losses on because of the way the market moved, well, there's not much I can do about that. But if I took the losses because I was making a mistake, okay, what do I need to put in place to keep me from making that mistake into the future? And as you've learned over the years, uh, TRO, I am a rule maker. <laughs> Sometimes I get so many rules that I have to go back and say, okay, uh, some of these rules are overlapping. Let's go and rewrite these rules in such a way that they don't, they, they, they're less confusing. Right. Because, I mean, if it, if you can't fit it, my, 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 my overall rule is if it can't fit on a three by five index card, then there's no point writing the rule because it's too big and too complicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I say about the trading plan, not just the one rule, but the whole plan. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm saying all my rules, I got to get all my rules onto a three by five. Okay. Because, and, and the reason why is because that way I can pick up the three by five, look at the three by five. And after, after I've made a mistake or I, even after a good trade, I can look at my three by five and say, Hey, did I go and do everything I was supposed supposed to do here? Now, you know, you just opened up a can of worms. You're going to have to show what's, what your three by five card looks like. <laughs> okay. okay I'll, I don't have time today to go and do this, but I'll, cause as soon as I get off this call with you, I got to go and, uh, uh, take care of some things I'm doing today. But uh, I will definitely go and do that tomorrow. I'll go and take my uh, three by five card and I'll take a picture of it and I'll just I'll post it, you know, on 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 the Facebook uh, group because I guess that's the best place to put a photo. Um, wouldn't work very well on uh, YouTube. Well, yeah, you could. Oh, yeah, you can send it to me or I can grab it off there and and bring it up on the yeah. screen. Yeah. Now, of course, what's going to also happen? You're going to open up a big cheap can of worms because <laughs> I've got all of my shorthand in it that nobody's going to understand. But we'll get the concept of how you fit it all onto a car. Yeah. So, and everybody, you know, that's the thing too. Everybody's trading style is going to be slightly different. You know, everybody's methodology is going to be slightly different. And so everybody's card should look different. Yeah. You know, because you're supposed to go and, you know, personalize this for the way you're trading. I can't trade the way you trade. You can't trade the way I trade. It's just, you know, you can try, but usually it doesn't end well. No, it doesn't. So, fellow traders, the fastest 15 minutes in trading is just about over. I hope you gleaned uh, something from that discussion. And if you have any more questions, feel free to ask. And always remember and never forget, it's not what you trade. It's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks. This is the rumpled one over and out.